I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and welcome to this CCNA video practice exam, the Return to the Planet of the Mixed Topics. The mixed topic practice exams and video practice exams have been so popular that we're going to make this a regular series. So as always, you'll have 10 questions posed to you on different CCNA and CSENT topics. Feel free to pause the video for a few seconds if you do need a little extra time because of the time limits with the different video sharing sites. We do go through the questions fairly quickly, but that's something you have to get used to for your exam day as well. And we'll have full explanations of all 10 questions and their answers at the end of the video. So let's dive in with question one. How many wires actually cross over? inside a crossover cable. Which of these bids would win a root bridge election? Give me a few seconds there, we'll move on. By default, a RIP enabled interface will do which of the following? And as always with my practice exams, I'll give you a little hint here, of course, when you have multiple choice, don't assume just one answer is correct in any of my exams. All right, let's move on to question four. We're going to scroll up for this one a bit. Which of these statements shown on the screen is true regarding that one line ACL? Access list five, deny IP 172.12.12.1, followed by all zeros. Which of those statements is true? And we're going to move on, so you might need to pause there for a moment. When you're creating a banner, what character or characters are acceptable as the delimiting character? So first off, you got to know what the delimiting character is. And then, is it an asterisk only? Is it a dollar sign only? Can it be any character? And does it have to match at the start and end of the banner? Kind of a two-in-one question there, okay? We'll move on. Which of these EIGRP route descriptors seen in the EIGRP topology table indicates a route that can presently be used to carry traffic? We have active, passive, carryable, and established. Which of these four is not Cisco proprietary? Those are the two phrases we run into a lot in our CCNA studies, right? Cisco proprietary and industry standard. So which of these is not Cisco proprietary? Which of these four helps a PC to discover the MAC address of a remote device when that remote device's IP address is already known? Which of these DHCP message types are broadcasts? And that's something we need to know because, of course, if we've got a router in between the two devices, we could have trouble with those broadcasts. And every once in a while you get questions on the same topic uh, in a row, so here's one of those. Which of these message types, DHCP message types, is sent by the device that is actually requesting the IP address? Maybe it's request and maybe it's not. All right, let's head back and go through the answers to these questions. Before we do that, I want to invite you out to the website, thebryantadvantage.com. Uh, over 275 free Cisco and Server 2008 uh, certification tutorials, videos, practice exams, lots of great free resources for just about any of the CCNA exams out there now and certainly the CCNP. Also invite you to register for my 100% absolutely free webinars. You will not be asked for any credit card information. You don't need a headset. All you need is 45 minutes of your time and a desire to get certified. We've got CCNA and CCNP webinars coming up and you can see those on the ccnawebinars.htm page on the website. And also invite you out to the blog, daily practice exam questions, daily videos, uh, links to interesting articles, and a lot of important and exciting certification opportunities coming up for you and training opportunities coming up for you as well from the Bryant Advantage. And you'll see those first on the blog. So I invite you to come out to the website and the blog. And let's go through the answers to these questions. In a crossover cable, four of the wires actually cross over. When you're looking at bids, it's the lowest bid that's going to win. And if it's a tie in numerically with that priority, which is the first part of the bid, then the MAC address is considered. But here, 
there's one address that definitely has a lower priority than the others. It's the one uh, with, that begins with 12742. So the MAC address doesn't come into play. So here it would be choice D. By default, a RIP enabled interface will accept version 1 and version 2 updates, but will only send version 1. So it would be A, B, and D here. It's not going to send version 2 updates by default. Let's scroll down a bit here and take a look at this question. We have a one line ACL and the one line is an explicit deny, which means it's actually going to deny everything. Don't forget the implicit deny. That's the invisible deny, if you will, the one you don't see after all the uh, explicitly written statements. So anytime you see lines and in an ACL and they only say deny and there's no permit anywhere, it's going to deny everything. Going to choice B, that's incorrect because that wildcard mask is legal. And putting C, D, E, and F together, we know by that number that this is a standard ACL. It falls in one of our two standard ACL numeric ranges. And therefore, we also know that the IP address shown is the source IP address to be matched on because that's what standard ACLs match on. It's the only thing they can match on, actually, is a source IP address. The delimiting character indicates the beginning and end of the banner. And that can be any character, but it has to be the same at the start and end of the banner. Because if it's not, the router or switch wouldn't know that you were actually starting and ending it. So again, a delimiting character, you can use any character for that, but it's got to be the same at the beginning and end of the banner. The passive descriptor with the capital P, that's the one you want to see, because that indicates a route that can be used to carry traffic. If it's in active mode, that means it's currently being calculated or recalculated and can't be used to carry traffic and there is no such thing as a carryable or established uh, descriptor in that topology table. The only one here that's not Cisco proprietary is actually OSPF. CDP, Cisco Discovery Protocol, we know that's Cisco proprietary. EIGRP is a Cisco proprietary routing protocol and ISL is our Cisco proprietary trunking protocol. This is ARP. This is what's going to get a MAC address for us when the IP address is known. You should know also what reverse does, uh, reverse ARP does from your frame relay studies. Uh, there is an inverse ARP, excuse me, inverse ARP in your frame relay studies. Reverse ARP you really don't see much of anymore and there's no such thing as obtuse ARP. And here the broadcasts are discover and request. Those are both broadcasts and they also happen to be the two that are sent by the device requesting an IP address. The offer and acknowledgments that come back from the servers, those are actually unicast back to the requesting device. Hope you enjoyed this video practice exam. If you're watching this on YouTube or any other uh, video sharing site, actually, be sure to look for some of my other exams and tutorials right here on the same site. I invite you out again to thebryantadvantage.com free practice exams. We've got those webinars coming up and additional video content as well. I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933. Thanks for taking this video practice exam and I'll see you at the website.